everybody, this is Jay Young, the host of the Jay Young Show. Before we get there, I want to, I want to, you know, this this is sponsored by King Operating Corporation. End of the year tax benefits, monthly income multiple on your investments. But but the most important thing right now, Jordan, I don't know if I told you about this or not, but my book that I wrote called The Upside of Oil and Gas Investing with Forbes is an Amazon bestseller. What? Hey. Congratulations. Man, I will send you the the gold star and you'll see that on on uh, on the book from now on. So that's Oh uh, my gosh, absolutely. I know pretty, I still don't have an autographed copy. So what is up with that? <laughs> well, hey, now you get one and you get a you get a star or whatever. Well, thank you. Whatever the I think it's a star. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that that's something that came out this week and uh real proud of that, but re- proud about uh, our team of people we have at King Operating. So any ideas or any thoughts about that, go to our website, kingoperating.com. But, hey, you know what the most important thing is? Jordan's here today, and we have an incredible I'm bless going you. crazy, so bless sorry you. about that. Yeah, hey, man. And, and, and Brad said he's got some sinus issues, too, man. Tis the season. It is. Man, I was, chill, I was chilly when I walked out this morning. <laughs> I know. Fall is finally here. Oh. That's what it feels like, anyway. Man, Halloween and the beautiful, beautiful um, – you know, the weather and everything is just awesome. Man, yes. before so it gets Brad too cold. Russell, our guest for today, entrepreneurial spirit, innovative mindset, significantly impacted not just the energy and technology centers, but um, previous to that, worked with videography, um, a lot of video projects. I mean, so like even won a Telly Award for Global Documentary of the Year. So talk about a man who's been in so many different fields, has done so many different things. Um, very, very excited to have Brad on the show with us today, Jay. Yeah. Hey, welcome, Brad. Welcome to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Whichever way you're supposed to lean. Yeah. yeah. But hey. <laughs> We appreciate you being on. I tell you, I've known you for, I guess, ten years or so, uh, in another another group. And and when we first met, you're a West Point guy, and Darcy Anderson with with Pro mentioned your name, and or we found out that we knew each. And man, he gave you such high regards, and just thought, man, you're the you're the greatest, and and you've got an incredible story. We'll talk about UStream. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about the Joe Rogan. The Joe Rogan days. We're going to talk about your new movie that's coming out. You've got a movie coming out called God's Here. We're going to talk about Hayden's Corner. I don't know what else we can talk about, but man. Well, his company, too. Linear. Let's get it on. Let's get started right here. Um, Brad, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to go all the way back, but just go back a little bit and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I, I grew up. In Dallas, Fort Worth, a little town called Granbury, um, modest upbringing, um, had wonderful parents, and my dad was uh, very blessed that he was always this sort of forward thinking, uh, you know, very, uh, I'll forget what, Renaissance man kind of person, had a wide depth of knowledge, um, and always exposed to early technologies. And so um, I, I grew up in a small town, small town, Granbury at the time was pretty small, and um, wanted to do something different than most people who were going to, you know, the local college or, or Texas or Texas A&M and um, decided to, to apply for the academies and got into West Point and decided wow. to. Uh, Small town to West Point. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah we, that's awesome. even, we didn't have the money for me to go visit. So I, I got in and uh, the first time I showed up was um, my first time there. And of course, <laughs> The way that works is you, you fly there and you, they, they bus you in. As soon as you pull up, uh, you know, a drill sergeant kind of guy jumps on the bus and starts yelling at you. So uh, I didn't I didn't get a real good view uh, for the first few days. So I was too scared to look around. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's but, awesome. So what did you study at West, West Point? So West Point uh, was founded in 1802 as uh, really an engineering college for the country. You know, the, we, it was – it's formed on the west point of the Hudson River, which was a very strategic location for the during the Revolutionary War. Uh, George Washington actually picked that location. You might remember the story of the Great Chain um, in, from the history books. They, have, they still have parts of the Great Chain there. And, and so it was founded as a, to bring engineering capabilities to the United States, this new nation. 
Um, so everybody gets at least some baseline of an uh, engineering background. And um, I did uh, engineering management and systems engineering, which is kind of like industrial engineering were, were my specialties. Wow. So you study, you study at West Point, get some lifelong friends, and then, you, then you're after, after school. What, what was your first, I mean, before you started Ustream, or what, 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 how did your career start after that, after, after West Point? Yeah, so if you go to West Point, you have to go in the Army. Uh, you sign up for at least five years in the Army. So I did that. That was more in, in like logistics and um, did various jobs around the country, a couple parts of other parts of the world. Um, I was very fortunate. I never got deployed into combat um, like many of my buddies um, did. And, but I uh, ended up at a defense supply center kind of DOD job in Columbus, Ohio, um, and, and I got to go to Ohio State for my grad school, which was really neat. And, but I did five years in the Army. Um, we had our first kid with my wife and um, decided to get out and um, <clears throat> didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, uh, but I knew I loved real estate. And I, I was fortunate enough to get a job working for Hillwood, uh, the, you know, for the Pro, Ross Pro Juniors company. Um, and that's how I met you know, uh, Darcy, who's also a West Point, there's a bunch of West Pointers um, that work for the pros. Um, and I, I did real estate development of all things for, for several years uh, at, at a really, really incredible company called Hillwood. Yeah. What is that? Then, then, then you had an idea. Go ahead. Sorry, Jay. No, I was going to say, I mean, I know you're at West, you're, you're at Hillwood and then you have an idea about something. How does that develop? And, and man, it's just an incredible story. Tell about your network. What does they say? Your network is your net worth. Your net worth is your net worth. Whatever, whatever that is. But but I know at that time you're like, I got an idea. So let's kind of go through the incubation, yeah. I guess, of your idea and and how you stream. Jordan, I don't mean to. Oh no! I mean, there. Honestly, the two questions go hand in hand here because what I was going to ask was, what was that transition like going from military to civilian life um, as? the military calls it a uh, military civilian. Um, so then you're making that transition, not just from one industry to the other, but also from military to civilian life. It's just a totally different um, way of operating and, and um, work culture also a little different as well. I mean, um, at, I could imagine my dad served in the Air Force for um, you know 25 years years and four months or something like that. So, um, so it's something near and dear to my heart, but I love sharing those stories and what helped you kind of go through that and into this next industry that you had decided to choose. Um, because it is a difficult thing for uh, military members to make that transition and then to figure out what's next and what to choose. I mean, I know it was shocking for me to go from full coverage healthcare with TRICARE to then having to figure out what benefits work best for you with a, a corporation. So interested to know that thought and how that tied into Jay's question as well. Yeah. Uh, transition from the military to civilian world is, is, is a, it can be a challenge for a lot of people uh, without, without a doubt. I mean, mostly because the civilian world doesn't know what to make of a military person. Like, okay, so you were, a tank commander for uh, a company, but what in the world is that? I need a marketing right. person, a finance <laughs> person. Um, the so that that could be that could be a challenge for uh, some for some people. I mean, luckily the company I went to, Hillwood uh, Ross, was a former Navy uh, office naval officer pilot, um, and so you know it's a uh, they they had a culture uh, that that understood how to the value that people from the military can bring, particularly on project management, time management, leadership, um, all these things, um, and bringing them into uh, uh, an, a business environment. They, they had a really good training program and indoctrination and all that um, in, into the culture. And, to, and so very patient with the military and, and a very good process. And a lot of the, you know, you look at companies like defense contractors, obviously um, do that well. And a lot of companies increasingly see the value of bringing in people who have, a, you know, hopefully good values, um, you know, good leaders, good managers of their time and project management. Um, you know, every organization needs that skill set. Um, and so for me, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a, that difficult of a transition. Um, but what was is it was a brand new industry that I didn't know anything about at all, real estate. Um, 
And then, um, and then I trained, I mean, you'll see this pattern in my career. Every time I've changed jobs, I've gone to a completely different industry with nothing to industries. I didn't almost nothing about, which is, I do not recommend to anybody, um, at all. Um, and so after, after Hillwood, um, I, I grew up, my father and I grew up, um, you know, like I said earlier, embracing technology. So I grew up in the era when, when the PC, you know, was coming out and my, my, my dad was buying, I mean, our first computer was a TRS-80, um, a Radio Shack TRS-80. And I learned how to program in basic on that. And I was just always amazed by computers. And then we got our first 286. Um, I actually had a VIC-20 before that. And then we got a 386. And so I was always around computers and I got really interested in this, this early technology called a bulletin board system as a young kid and, and ran a bulletin board system. And that was before the days of the internet, you had one modem over here and another modem over here and you could call into someone else's computer and sort of have like a website and, and download files and chat and play little text games. Um, and so that, that was always a part of my upbringing and my, my love. And, and so I'm at this real, I'm at the Hillwood and um, the internet was starting to really obviously had taken off. YouTube had just came out. Um, and me and a couple other buddies just did a side project, just messing around and created a live video technology. Um, and, uh, that, 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 and then we put it out to the world and it went viral. And so, um, I made the decision, I think I was 27 at the time, had two kids and I said, well, this might be the last chance I got to take a really, really big risk. Um, so I went to Ross Perot, uh, junior and told him, you know, I was going to move on and take a swing at this thing. And. Um, he was very thankful for my, my effort and hard work at Hillwood and, you know, became one of my very first investors in, 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 um, in Ustream and, um, did invested follow on as well. And so I packed up my bags and went to Silicon Valley, didn't know a soul <laughs> and tried to figure out this internet thing. Um, and then, you know, 10 years later, we ended up selling it, um, to IBM, you know, had tens of millions of dollars in revenue, hundreds of employees across the world. Um, and it was a <clears throat> roller coaster of a ride, uh, to say the least. How much money did you raise equity wise in the very beginning or how much, how much equity did you start to start with? Um, back then streaming, um, was very expensive. You had to buy your own servers and, um, locate them in data centers. AWS wasn't around and, and the cloud wasn't invented. So you had to, we had to create our own cloud essentially. So it was, it was, it was expensive I mean, we needed millions of dollars and raised tens of millions of dollars from venture capitalists, um, DCM, SoftBank, um, Masayoshi son, who's, uh, who's the CEO of SoftBank and flew to Japan and, you know, went up to the 70th floor or whatever of his condo with the Shiodome, uh, building and had to drink sake and go through all this to go get the investment. So it was, a uh, so yeah, but it took a lot of money, a lot of capital, um, tens of millions of dollars to go do this in the and yeah um, and it, because the tech I mean, it's a fraction of that now because of cloud but but that wasn't available back then right what's the so, best what what's the what's the because i want to make sure you finish up with the joe rogan is the joe rogan right at the end of this or something or what, where i mean what what year what year did you start i guess we yeah, what year did you start you Street? we started in i believe 2007 seven um, because Ross, Ross Pro is still alive at that time. Well, and I worked for Junior at Hillwood. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm I'm saying, but I'm Ross is still seven. alive. Yeah, Ross is still alive. I met him He's several times. Walking around. I, yeah. I went over there several times with Darcy, man. What a what an incredible great, 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 great family, great, great, great guy, um, great leader. No, so uh yeah, so Ustream was a was a platform, right? The, it, we were the first to build a live streaming platform. Um, think of now you can watch sports live on on your on the internet or on your phone um we were the ones that were, were early amongst others early in, the, in in that world and built this very large platform we were the, the first live broadcast ever watched on an iphone was was us it was obama's inauguration like a million people watched it the very first live stream from an iphone was us wow um, and yeah. we built those technologies the cuban the cuban stole your idea and put sports on it right is that what happened uh, he was before me. Um, I, I, I used to go meet with him and talk to him about this, and I used to tell him how crappy his technology was compared to what we built. Man. So he was like a dinosaur. 
Um, he was he was always very kind to me. We we we, we thought we did some stuff together back in the, even in the YouTube days. But we had a lot of we did so we we streamed a lot of sports, celebrities, breaking news events. We were really cool, world changing things that I felt like we were a part of from um, the anti Putin uh, riots mm -hmm. in I think 2010. Um, people were streaming the atrocities of the Assad, Assad regime in, in Syria from their phone. It was going on CNN and, you know, NBC Nightly News and um, to, you know, the curiosity landing on, on Mars was streamed live on Ustream through NASA. Um, millions wow. of people saw all these things. And Charlie Sheen went crazy. Um, or I shouldn't say that. Charlie Sheen had, a, you know, uh, had his Tiger Blood incident um, live on Ustream, which was which was. You know, another little, I mean, so there's a really a lot of really neat things that were around pop culture and just world changing events that we were a part of. And, um, and then I think you, as you were mentioning, we started streaming um, the UFC fights in partnership with the UFC. We were the first platform that they allowed to stream. Um, I got to meet Dana and all the fighters and, you know, and, and I get through that. I got to you know Joe Rogan. And um, <clears throat> of course, he was a, an announcer um, on it still is on, on for the UFC was doing, you know, he did comedy stand up. Was just, those were his main income streams. And he wanted to do, um, to talk more. And so I convinced him to do it, do it on Ustream, his first podcast. And JRE, Joe Rogan Experience Number One, is is on Ustream. It's funny, you can find it still on the internet. And they're trying to figure out the chat room. At some point, I call him as a tech support, trying to help them figure out how to do it. Um, and then he did it for, he stayed on Ustream for many years. And then after I sold the company, he eventually decided to move on to, the YouTube, and then he did his infamous. So you built uh, you built Joe Rogan, you you gave him I didn't the platform. It. Um, no, but we powered it. We powered it. Um, he asked me to be on the show a bunch of times. I never did, and now I, I deeply regret that. Uh, it was a bummer. I should have done it, um, but um, but yeah, I know that. So it, it, we, it was a really interesting experience, and um, you know, very proud of the outcome that we got for everybody. So when you're looking at building something from the ground up, what is the biggest difference? I mean, obviously when you have a few people and then all of a sudden you have lots and lots of people that you are managing, what do you think is the biggest challenge from one tier of business to a more, uh, a, a massive operation like what you ended up uh, having? Well, <clears throat> I've only primarily built new technologies and even before you think about scaling people or or ra you know raising tons of money or whatever um one of the things i've learned i've learned this the hard way is you've got to find you know product market fit and you know really mm -hmm. solve a real problem that people are willing to pay for and, and so you want to spend as little as money as possible during that phase and have as small a team as possible during that phase because you need real quick decision cycles um Three guys, three guys, or three men and women in a conference room can solve a lot of a lot of problems um, in a lot of ways better than you know a group of hundred people trying to think it through. So, um, in the early days, it's about really uh, working crazy hours, solving really complex problems with a small team, and trying to just get it right on a small scale. Mm -hmm. Prove out um, the need for investment. And I've done that right sometimes and I've done that wrong sometimes. It's, it's really hard. It's a hard thing to do, but you, you know, but to make sure you have, you have something that the market will ultimately value and then more importantly pay for. And if you know, cause you don't have that, there's no point in scaling your company. Um, and I think that applies to not just technology companies. I think any kind of business that, that's probably out there. Uh, and then behind that success, you start scaling um, the team and, and, a lot of entrepreneurs get that wrong. You can scale, you can raise too much money and scale too fast. And then you, mm -hmm. you know, it, it creates all sorts of issues. Um, you can scale too slow, not raise enough money and get left behind in the dust by other people. So um, it's a, it's a, um, it's, it's something that you have to be very, very thoughtful on and, um, and, and knowing exactly when to do that. It's a little bit of an art and a little bit of a science mm -hmm. probably. Oh, that's cool. So, so your career goes from from you um, and, and, and I want to talk about the new movie. You want to talk about the, you want to talk about the new movie here. You want to talk about um, your your philanthropy. Where where do you want to go right now? What's the best uh, thought for you? Well, after uh, after you stream, I took a little bit of time off, and 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 then 
ultimately decided I wanted to start another company. I think I guess it's in my blood. And my father and I were, um, I, we went to Africa on, on, a, on a hunt. And, you know, I tell people there's poverty and then there's like poverty. And right. I saw um, poverty. We went to South Africa and the Botswana. I'm on the near the back forth on the Lopopo River. Um, and it really just broke my heart to see just how much pain and suffering was happening. And so I started just researching, you know, water and, you know, basic human needs and how many people die a year from lack of clean water or, um, you know, pollution related diseases or whatever it may be, war. And, um, and so we had this idea around taking a old timey Texas windmill, like the small windmills on a farm mm -hmm. that's used to pump water and creating some sort of device um, that can generate electricity um, and then maybe taking that to Africa. And the idea was you could maybe give a, a village clean water, uh, which is in desperate need and maybe some sort of electrical power for lights or if you could have a battery and potentially and you could, you could power a hot, a hot water heater and they could get a warm shower, wash their hands, you know, clean and clean dishes and maybe change, you know, some, some, some fundamental suffering that was happening there. And so we started this path of trying to solve that, that problem and the physics at the time, the conventional physics was there wasn't any solution to um, how to take an old timey Texas windmill um, and generate usable voltage or usable power. And, and so we started that, we made a discovery and a new type of an electric machine, uh, my father and I, and, um, and built this, that we call the HET, and decided to build a company around it that's now called Linear Labs. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's been a company that's like anything, we've kind of gone, so you go left and you sort of, then you have to go right. We've, we've done that, we've had to do that as we're learning. Um, and then now really finding our, our groove in wind power, um, is, which all ironically is where we kind of, the whole thing kind of started. Um, and so that's very exciting. Um, that company's, uh, uh, you know, off to the races as we speak. Um, the tragically in the middle of all that, I started the company during the middle of COVID or right before mm -hmm. COVID. So that was a, uh, we could have picked a worse time. Um, and, and then combine that with, um, and this is where the flange comes in, you know, right in the middle of COVID, right in the middle of school lockdowns in April 17, 2020, uh, my 12 year old boy took his life. Um, oh man, that was, uh, obviously awful. Yeah. Uh, I wish I'm, I'm no human being and, um, normal kid, you know, suicides, it's always complicated, but it's the second leading cause of death of kids. Um, and about 55% of those are impulsive. Um, so the wow. second most likely way your kid will die is to take their own life. And so, yeah. uh, and that was a shocking statistic that I knew nothing about prior to Hayden dying. Um, and, and I didn't know, in fact, I, I knew nothing about very little about uh, suicide. Yeah. Obviously when that happened, I've, uh, jumped in with both feet to try to, you know, take something that was obviously very painful and hopefully do a little bit of good out of it. Yeah. I, I remember when that obviously that happened and, and being around you and being, you know, you're one of the most incredible people about not, not just going into a shell and, and, and that, that's not Brad Hunstable. You didn't go into a shell and just go, Hey man, I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk to anybody. You, you went out there on social media, you talked, you talked it up and, and you, I, there's no telling right now. There's no telling how many lives you've, you have saved because of your voice and because of the things that I don't, I don't know if you realize that or not, or how much you do realize that, or if you even do about all the different people that you just telling your story and about Hayden and about what happened and what, what, what you have to go through and all the different emotions. And, Oh my God, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. And, but the things that have changed since then, because of you literally, I mean, just, just being out there and being, being the voice behind, Hey, you know what? It's not, it's not the, you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad. We can get over this. There's things that we can do. There's obviously all this stuff. So man, I mean, just kudos. And, and I've always just looked up to you so much for that because you were out there and you were the front runner about, Hey, let's talk about it, man. It's not, it's not, let's, let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. 
Yeah, not hiding from it. And I think um, the one of the biggest parts about that, um, we've had uh, near suicide incidences in my family and um, my, my uh, a close family member also uh, had taken their life. So completely relate to you in that sense. And um, it's easy to withdraw and it's harder to reach out and get that community around you. And that is what is so important is reaching out to people, having the community and knowing that you're not alone, even though you may feel like that right now and reaching out, getting help, asking for help. And I just can't even iterate this enough. It is so important to know that you are not alone. You are loved and you're seen. And um, if you are struggling or in a situation like that, we'll provide a, a, a hotline down below in the comments and in the description. So if you feel like you're struggling, you can reach out to that number. Um, of course, our DMs are always open and, uh, and we're here. We're here. Yeah. Tell us a little about Hayden's Corner. What, what's the what's what's Hayden's Corner and Branch to Hope? Tell us a little about that. Yeah. So after Hayden, you know, died, <clears throat> we I. It was actually two days after we buried him. I went on Facebook and ironically a video. I, I, want, I want, there were starting to be some rumors in our neighborhood or in our community. Oh, and no. I just wanted to tell the story. And I pulled out my iPhone um, and I said, COVID killed my son, but not in the way you think. And I just poured my heart out. Uh, mostly around, I mean, obviously around Hayden, what happened, I actually told the story, I broke down. Um, and, but then I also just sort of shared my heart at the time about just didn't feel like the lockdowns didn't make sense to me. And what was, I was, what are we doing to the kids? I mean, I, you know, I remember thinking what happened to, you know, save the most vulnerable. And I, I thought that included women and children um, and not just the elderly. So that, again, I want to get in that whole topic, but, but nonetheless, I, 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 you know, and that was a broken, I was broken. Um, and that video went viral on 150 million people saw it across. Oh, wow. And I mean, I was getting recognized all over. I can tell you a million stories um, from, I mean, all over the country to, to wow. Zoom calls. I was, I, had, I met with Gavin Newsom's energy secretary and um, I'm on the Zoom and he recognizes my face and he goes, are you Brad from the internet? And he just starts <laughs> crying. Wow. Uh, I'm on the Zoom right in front of me. His boy had been struggling. So, you know, a like million stories like that. So, so that made me, you know, and it was a, something was pointing me that I, maybe I can make a difference. And so we formed Hayden's Corner, which is a, a nonprofit fund in Hayden's honor. Um, it's named at, I got the name from um, um, uh, one of the, uh, Vander Holyfield, one of the most famous boxers in the world. He called me shortly after Hayden died and he said, he goes, you got the four time heavyweight champion of the world in Hayden's Corner um, around trying to solve mental health. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that because that's a pretty good little line. Wow. So I called it Hayden's Corner. Um, and then locally, uh, we formed a nonprofit um, called Branch to Hope, which is a 23-acre, beautiful Christ-centered ranch that we bought um, where we do horse therapy and counseling services and high school ministry, all sorts of amazing events. We just had our big gala, raised a bunch of money. Um, we do concerts. It's really a special, it's a, it's a spiritual place that we're very proud of, and, and I'm glad to be on the, you know, working on that project. We've done, partnered with Dak Prescott. We brought and Matthew McConaughey's, both their foundations have brought the inner city youth out there to even, you know, get them exposed to horses. We, we made birdhouses, we fished, all this sort of stuff. And, and you know, so it's That's been, great. been great. And then, and then we made uh, two, we made two films. Um, the first one uh, called Almost 13, um, which is a 60 minute film that won the 2021 Global Documentary of the Year. Um, and we, the films basically tells Hayden's story and I think we've done it beautifully, but it's, it's real life. Um, it's, 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 it's emotional film. Um, but we also talk about how to safely have the, the conversation with your child. And we use the word conversations matter. Um, and to your point, Jay, about, you got to talk about this stuff and Jordan, you know, you know, ask for help. Um, and it starts by a conversation. That's how you get a solution. And so we really had pushed that during the pandemic and still push that. And the film is, um, we're very proud of It's on YouTube, it's on Tubi. And then we just completed another film. It's a full feature film um, by the same director who was, he's now my best friend, Bill McAdams, who made our, who made Almost 13. He wrote and starred in uh, our new movie called God's Here. 
and it's just an incredible full feature film. Kevin Sorbo's in it. Um, Sarah Reeves is one of the top Christian singers. She scored all the music. It's beautiful. It's 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 stunning music, um, and it's a story of. It's inspired by two true events, which is uh, Bill's brother tragically was killed by a young girl texting and driving about eight years ago. Yeah. And um, his family and his mom invited her to the funeral, forgave her. Um, it's, so it's this beautiful story of a tragedy and this, you know, grace and forgiveness. <clears throat> and then Bill was with me during my grief journey after Hayden died. And, you know, it hasn't all been you know, sunshine and flowers, you know, it's grief is ugly. It can be, um, and, and it can be a bit bumpy. Um, it's hard. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. And, 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 you know, instantaneous grief might even in some cases ways be more of a challenge. And so, um, he saw all of that and he, so he sort of, you know, he says he channeled a lot of that, those moments into the film and replicated. He was a dad who the stories about a dad who loses his family. A little boy um and so basically in some ways reenacted what he saw me go through and i can every scene that he went through i base happened to me um and but it's a beautiful film it's going to come out this november certainly locally we're hoping it can pop and go more national in the theaters um and but it'll be on all the major streaming uh services god's here and sarah reeves new song Plans I have for you is kind of the, is the stunning song of the future. I, I think it's going to be like, I think it might be the number one Christian song in the country. Oh, by, wow. by Christmas. We'll That's see. awesome. That's awesome. What do you see when, when uh, normally, um, I mean, do the kids, the kids come out and tell you how, how, and I mean, I know you've been around a lot of different people. I'm not talking about just Hayden and specifically, but just, I mean, how do you know, or what, what goes on with, 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 with kids or do they just, shell up and don't talk or do they just kind of go in their rooms and not talk and then you know something that they, they they're thinking about you know committing suicide or is it just something that that happens sporadically what what what's something that that we could help a parent or two out right now to to hopefully they're watching this and they're going to talk to their kids about it but what's kind well, of the signs and symptoms that yeah, you're looking yeah. for yeah well, for, first thing I, I would point them to almost 13 as a parent, watch it yourself as with your, your, your spouse uh, or your loved ones. Um, and then maybe, maybe consider watching it with your child. I know, um, mm -hmm. I've heard stories from parents sitting down their kids and watching it as young as, you know, 10, 11, 12. Um, and then they have, it spurns a conversation or starts a conversation. It's a conversation starter afterwards. So, you know, sitting your kid down and speaking them to them in an age appropriate manner about not only just their feelings, but maybe more directly around suicide, I think is step one. Have you ever felt like this? And, and no matter what they tell you, if they have, um, if they have felt like that, then, you know, the, in my record, I tell parents the first next thing that needs to come out of your mouth is thank you so much for sharing that with me. Right. I know how hard that was and I'm very proud of you for telling me, because if I know, you know, we have, we can go, we can get help. We got solutions. Yeah. Um, and, and, and just reminding them that there's nothing in this world that you would, that they could ever do that you would want them to hurt themselves right. and you expect them to come tell you if they have those thoughts. And if you're not around, you want them to go tell a trusted adult and heaven forbid, if they're alone, well, let's talk about what are some things, how can we calm ourselves? What are ways that we can, you know, and you sort of start this dialogue with your kids. So to me, that is first and foremost is to have a open to create an atmosphere of, of a trusting dialogue and kids don't like to share things. So, you know, mm -hmm. my daughters even, you know, how was your day? Fine. Right. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Yeah, that's what well, I was going to say. Like you have to have the trust there in order to have those conversations. And so, you know, um, it, I think sometimes if you come off too strong, then kids will retract. Um, but if you have built that conversation and, and trust and, and take time to connect with the with your kids and in a in a meaningful manner um and you know um through some therapy activities that i've seen uh that I, have been mentioned to me that other kids have done uh, as they've grown up is like if they're doing an activity sometimes it's easier for kids to open up about how they're feeling or what they're going through and things like that so you know if you're uh you know playing catch or if you're drawing or if you're making food together like 
doing something together that's like an activity to then kind of build trust, build um, a, a conversation, and then, you know, ask about those kinds of things, I think would be an easier way to get that truth out in a trusting environment um, instead of, you know, just sitting down and having a proper uh, conversation. You know, sometimes it does warrant that, but other times I've found um, from conversations that I've had with other parents is, oh, okay, this is what this is what this sounds like whenever we're having activity, we're able to connect and then have those deeper conversations. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. yeah I, I, the only thing I also add, I would add is um, in terms of signs that we looked there, suicide is always complicated. Um, but, you know, obviously if there's a big jarring thing that might happen in their life, a girlfriend broke up with them, boyfriend broke up with them, um, they were bullied. You know, those are really important moments where you need to sit down and have those conversations. And, and, and hopefully you've already established, as Jordan was saying, a trusting dialogue, which a lot of it means listening. I mean, get, get off your phone and just listen. Uh, when my daughter gives me one of those, um, how's your day? I'm fine. I'll just go sit in her room, and just kind of lay there and, just, and then she'll start talking, but it takes some time, you know. Um, and so listening, 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 loving and listening is, 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 is the balance, is the key. And then the other last thing I'll say is, if they say it, um, you have to take it serious. Um, and there, there's a, I mean, there's a tendency to think you're just a kid, you're a teenager. Um, if they say it, you have to take it serious. And that means a very serious conversation and, and an intentional loving conversation. And don't not be afraid to seek help. There are professionals, there's tons of resources. Counseling is amazing. And uh, yes. talk to you works. Um, if you, there's a trusting relationship between two, the two people, um, it can be a game changer. You know, we used to call talk therapy, your aunt, your coach, you know, your grandmother. We've kind of gotten away from a lot of that, that yeah. and because we're all on our phones. Um, but counseling, forget the stigma. It is, I mean, mentorship, call whatever you want, you know, right. just a conversation. It, it's, it works. Um, and sometimes one affirming adult in a kid's life can be the difference between life and death. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think the other thing too, just one quick note about the stigma of, of therapy is that, especially talk therapy is um, that it's woo woo or, you know, whatever, but, but I explain it to people this way. It helps you navigate the roadmap of your mind and everyone's mind is different. Everybody needs different tools, sometimes the same tools, but having that trusted person in your life, which uh, I, I go to therapy and I call it my safe box. I go to my safe box, I talk with my trusted person and I can work through some of those things with somebody who is not judgmental, who is understanding and then helps me understand it and resonate with it so that I can work through it with the tools that I've gathered and then right. work through that roadmap of, of my mind. And I hope others can do that as well. It's really important. Couples, yeah. single, kid, therapy, uh, all of it, de definitely worth it, for well, sure. Well, look at the Sopranos, the, the, the mob boss on Sopranos, whatever his name was. I didn't really watch that show a lot, but, but that, that guy went to therapy and just talked about, I mean, I know it's kind of a weird situation and maybe this isn't a very good example, but um, <laughs> I was thinking, like but, Howard Stern. I think he goes to therapy three times a week or something yeah. like that. Now that guy know? needs to. I know he needs to. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know the mob boss and all that, but yeah, it is yeah. good just to get out and talk to somebody. And 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 yeah. it's not it's not a it's not your best friend, but just somebody outside that's a third party that can that can help. And I think one thing too, we we had um, Thomas Bates, Doctor Tommy, Doctor Thomas Bates on our show. <laughs> <laughs> when Tommy boy, he called himself, but you know, he talks about goals and he says, you know, everybody that leaves the, the, the Neely school of business, TCU graduate MBA program has a goal. I give them two goals and make sure that, Hey, I want to be worth 5 million in five years. And, and even though they're, they're working toward that goal, but it's a goal that they have. So I think that's another deal and talk about mentorship. Um, I know we need to wrap it up, Brad, man, you've been so great here. Jordan, you got anything you want to you wanna add real quick? Just one last question. You always know that's how it goes. Um, so as you're looking through your life and the twists and turns and successes and valleys that you've been through and all the various industries that you've seen and, and 
kickstarted technology with, what advice would you give to your 18 year old self? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, probably the same thing you hear people say on their deathbed, which is I, I would enjoy the ride more. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always goals are good. And I'm, I, you got to know, you know, have a goal. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but at least for me, I was always so focused on the goal and the outcome. I, I didn't stop enough to just enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, it's not the destination. It's the journey that gets you there. And as is anything in life with your kids, with, uh, you know, your spouse, with, um, you know, your business. Um, I like my company now, like we have goals and I want to win and all those sort of things. Um, but I soak in, I think I try to soak in more of the moments and the experiences and, um, and just enjoy that and not, you know, my dad used to say, it's never as good as you think it is. And it's never as bad as you think it is. And that seems to be kind of, kind of always been the case. And, uh, entrepreneurship's hard. Um, starting tech, starting companies is really, really difficult. And yeah. uh, any kind of company is difficult. It's hard on everybody around you too. Um, and so I would have taken more time to sort of uh, just savor it in the moment than trying to look so far forward. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, Brad, it's been an incredible interview and very emotional. You've been through some things that, that we hope that nobody ever goes through and but you know what the greatest thing is man you are out there 100 percent got Dak Prescott got all these different things that you're doing and I tell you that is just so commendable because it would be so easy and when I first saw your stuff on social media four years ago I'm like this is this is great because you're not just you know most people in your situation I'm assuming uh, you know we would not go on social media, tell their story and tell everybody else, Hey, this is what happened to me. Don't let it happen to you. Hug your kids, you know, sit with them, walk around the block. I know, I noticed that one. They said that, you know, Hey, walk around the block and, and you know, the first block, they may not say anything, but then all of a sudden they start talking after a while, you know, mm -hmm. but, but they will, but that is something that's the greatest thing that, that about you, Brad, that, that you've done. You got the movie coming out. God's here. Make sure you watch that in November locally. Make sure you go on the Brad Hunstable, you know, Facebook page because he's got the, the Hayden's corner. He's got branch to hope. He has everything that you need to know and just, just keep it up because you know what? Hey, you could help. You could send a check for whatever, or you could volunteer your time and you could literally save a life. Save a life of a young kid and all this tragedy that goes on. So, Brad, I mean, man, it's just been such a joy knowing you and 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 and, and knowing what you're giving back right now is awesome, man. We appreciate having you on the show, and uh, man, Jordan, we're, we're we're raising the bar up here, aren't we? I know, man. I know. I'm like, all right, next guest. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, I feel sorry for that person. Wow, yeah. maybe. Wow. But anyway, Brad, thanks a lot. Appreciate having Thank you, you on, everybody. Thanks for coming to the Jay Young Show. Go to go to Brad Hunstable. I don't know if it's .com, but Facebook or wh Instagram. whatever. Instagram. You Google those. Brad Hunstable, I guarantee you, you're going to see a lot. Because that guy gets out there. He's out there a lot, and he's been around. And it's a little, 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 I mean, what I like about it, too, is it's a little kid from Granbury. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> man, just think about that. I mean. A little kid from yeah. Granbury, and all of a sudden, look what he's achieved. So, Brad, thanks a lot for coming on. Jordan, you, a pleasure as always. Absolutely. And everybody, thanks for being here on the Jay Young Show. Appreciate you. See you again next week.